In the last video, we talked about how to calculate the sums of squares in an analysis of variance table for simple linear regression. What we'll do in this video is go on to talk about the other values in the analysis of variance table. So we'll use the same examples before the skin cancer mortality and latitude example. And this is the analysis of variance table for that regression analysis. And here's a scatter plot of the data. So we have mortality is the response variable, latitude is the predictor variable. Here's our equation for our fitted line, our regression line, and here's the line going through the scatter plot of the data. And we talked previously about how these numbers here in this sum of squares column are calculated. This column here, it's labeled DF, which stands for degrees of freedom, the total degrees of freedom. So in the row, it says total. That's always equal to the sample size minus one. So the sample size for this data set, there's one state missing. So it comes to 49. So N equals 49 for this example. And so n minus one is 48. So the total degrees of freedom is 48 for this example. In general, the total degrees of freedom in an analysis of variance table for simple linear regression is n minus one. The regression degrees of freedom is equal to the number of predictor variables in the model. So for simple linear regression, we only have one predictor variable. In simple linear regression, the regression degrees of freedom is always equal to one. When we go on to talk about multiple linear regression, we'll have multiple predictors, and this number in the analysis of variance table for those models will be equal to the number of predictor variables. Just one predictor variable, so the regression degrees of freedom is just one. And then the error degrees of freedom in the analysis of variance table is given by the difference between n minus one and one. And so that comes to n minus two in this case. In this particular example, that comes to 47. And it's always the case that just as the sum of squares added together came to the total, so the regression sum of squares plus the error sum of squares equals the total sum of squares. Similarly, the regression degrees of freedom plus the error degrees of freedom equals the total degrees of freedom. And here more generally, one plus n minus two is equal to n minus one. Here's a reminder of the formulas for the sums of squares. So the total sum of squares, take the difference between the y values and y bar, the sample mean of y squared and added over the sample size. Regression sum of squares, difference between y hat and y bar squared and added over the sample and the error sum of squares difference between y and y hat squared and summed over the sample. Okay, next let's talk about the mean square column. Here that's labeled adjusted mean square. And the mean square column is obtained by dividing the sum of squares column by the degrees of freedom column. You just do that for the regression and the error rows. You don't do that for the total. So the mean square for regression because we're doing simple linear regression and the regression degrees of freedom is just one, the mean square is equal to the sum of squares. So it's just 36,464. Meaning giving us an extra decimal place here, but, but this number is the same as this number. The mean square for error is the sum of squares for error, the error sum of squares divided by the error degrees of freedom. So 17,173 divided by 47 comes to this number here, 365.4. And this number should be familiar to you. If I was to take the square root of that number, I would get the regression standard error down here, 19.1150. Let's just do that calculation so that you can see. So we'll do taking the square root of 365.4. Okay, and we should get 19.115. There we go, there's a little bit of rounding error there. Okay, so, and in terms of formulas over here, the mean square for regression is just the regression sum of squares divided by its degrees of freedom, which is just one. The mean squared error is the error sum of squares divided by its degrees of freedom, which is n minus two. 
The next column is labeled F value, and that's the ratio of the regression mean square to the error mean square. So it's 36,464.2 divided by 365.4. Let's just demonstrate that as well. Do a quick calculation. So this is gonna be F. And again, this is just for illustration. You wouldn't need to do this in, in practice, but it's nice to know where these numbers come from. So 36,464.2 divided by 365.4. Okay, and hopefully we'll get 99.8. There may be some rounding error. Okay, there we go, 99.8. And here's the, the formula in general. So it's the mean square for regression divided by the mean squared error. What is that number? Well, that number is the test statistic for testing the slope parameter beta one. So remember our simple linear regression model is that expected value of y is equal to beta zero plus beta one x. So it's of interest to test whether beta one equals zero is possible or whether there's strong evidence that beta one is something other than zero. So our null hypothesis is beta one equals zero. Our alternative is beta one not equal to zero. And our test statistic is that F value in the analysis of variance table. And then the idea is if that test statistic is way out in the tail of an F distribution, then that suggests that the null hypothesis can be rejected and we've got pretty strong evidence that beta one is not equal to zero. So one way of making that decision about whether or not to reject the null hypothesis is to calculate a p-value. And the p-value is the right-hand tail area beyond the value of the F statistic. So F distributions have two degrees of freedom. They have a numerator degrees of freedom and a denominator degrees of freedom. The numerator degrees of freedom is this number here, the regression degrees of freedom. So it's one for this test in simple linear regression. And the denominator degrees of freedom is error degrees of freedom. So 47 in this example. So I could get Minitab to calculate the p-value for me. So if I go to calc and then probability distributions and then F, so I'm going to do cumulative probability and numerator degrees of freedom is one, denominator degrees of freedom is 47. My input constant is the value of the F statistic, 99.8. And I'll just have Minitab return what the left tail probability is. So the probability of an F distribution with one numerated degree of freedom and 47 denominated degrees of freedom, probability of being less than or equal to 99.8. And it's for all intents and purposes one. It's not one exactly, but it's, it's one to a very large number of decimal places. And so the right hand tail area will be one minus that. And so the p-value is essentially zero. And if I look back in my analysis of variance table, Minitab does that calculation for us. That's the 0, 0.000 that we can see here. Okay, it's essentially zero. So we don't need to do that calculation down here, this one here, but this shows you how the calculation is being done. And so because we've got a very small p-value and using our usual 0 0.05 significance level, our p-value is less than 0 0.05. And so that's sufficient to allow us to reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis. And so our conclusion is that beta one is not equal to zero. And that indicates that there is a significant linear relationship between Y and X, or in this case, between skin cancer mortality and latitude.